Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Um, my last couple videos on my main channel, Radix Ferrum, and on this channel have been talking about the economy and have been talking about uh, the uh, crypto collapse, things like FTX, and I've done a video on Tether, which was very clearly involved in fraudulent activity and is most likely um, not really backed by anything uh, as they claim to be. You know, they still have, haven't have done a real audit of their reserves. So there's something going on there, I believe. Uh, and I think that this is organized and I think it's orchestrated to bring in a central bank digital currency or a CBDC. So I have a couple things that I want to cover as far as that goes. Um, now, this is uh, this thread here is pretty long. We're going to go over it. Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. There is a link there to an article. Um, Barbara Barsma, Barsma, chief executive officer of Rebo Carbon Bank, about the personal carbon wallet. So this the entire uh, goal of this, by the way, guys, if you don't know, if you can't tell already, is control. Als we nou eens iedereen, laten we beginnen in Nederland, uh, die uitstootrechten verdelen en dat elk huishouden of elke burger een hoeveelheid uitstootrechten krijgt, zodat we opgeteld, ja, niet meer uitstoten dan onze grens. Vervolgens kunnen we, het zit in een carbon wallet, kan je dat noemen? Kan je bij kopen. Ja, en dan kan je. Ik, als ik wil vliegen, koop van iemand die uh, uh, niet, uh, niet gaat vliegen, omdat hij daar bijvoorbeeld geen geld voor heeft, die verkoopt aan mij zijn uh, carbon uitstootrechten en krijgt daardoor een beetje meer geld. Ja, ja. Of diegene woont in een kleiner huurhuis en ik woon in een groot huis. Ik heb dus meer uitstootrechten nodig om mijn huis te verwarmen. Mm -hmm. En zo kunnen mensen met een smalle portemonnee ook iets verdienen aan uh, vergroenen. Oké, okay, that's obviously not going to happen. Yeah, and you can see her here as part of the World Economic Forum, CEO of Carbon Bank. No, uh, poor people are not going to benefit from this. And they'll be forced to sell their carbon uh, to their their carbon tokens or whatever that you get uh, to people with bigger houses. Like, how on earth would that help uh, poor people? It certainly wouldn't. So this is all part of the, um, you know, the uh, their new, you'll... Uh, the new great reset you'll own nothing and you'll be happy or the green new deal whatever you want to call it these are all versions of the same thing which is total control and centralized control and it should be noted that ftx was a centralized crypto exchange um so just remember that guys uh, are you have um, have you any idea how your carbon footprint and your carbon wallet are really going to work in this dystopian world? The World Economic Forum have planned for us. By the way, the link to this thread will be in the video description. So everything referenced here, um, you can go look at and read these articles for yourself. I kind of want to just make this um, a quick overview to why this is obviously not going to be a good thing, but this is a very good article on it um, that explains how it's not going to be good. It's not going to help you. Russia to launch its digital ruble in 2024. There is a link to that article there. The Bank of Russia started CBDC testing in 2022 and expects to complete an official ba uh, banking rollout in 2024. Now, this is happening all over the world. Uh, many countries are starting to do this. In fact, uh, the New York Federal Reserve has started its digital dollar, a 12-week pilot uh, program, which, of course, we'll get into as well. But I want to bring up uh, Miss Catherine Austin Fitz because she is somebody, if you have not, if you're not familiar with her, if you haven't seen her work, uh, she's been talking about this for a very long time. Under the guise of a health emergency, we're watching the central banks take over the treasuries and the finances of sovereign governments and sovereignty of governments being imploded. And we are at a juncture where, as Vera says, we have to stop something. We have to do something because we cannot let this um, proceed. If we allow not just the mandates, but the vaccine passports, or digital IDs, or any part of what is considered to be the financial transaction control grid go into place, the combination of those systems together, much of which have been developed for the last 30 years, 
those systems together will combine into a control grid that can turn our home and our cars into a digital concentration camp. Yes. It's what Vera said. We don't need camps. We can use the remote technology. Well, exactly. And that's the other thing. Um, I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with the Internet of Things. I'm sure you're familiar with Smart Cities, the UN Smart Cities program, where they kind of want to have all of these devices in your house linked up to a network so they can control them. They can control the temperature in your home through your thermostat. They can shut off your water maybe if you're going over uh, an allotment, if they decide to ration things like this in the future, it would really give them total control. But the way that I think that smart cities are going to be promoted to people um, and look up sidewalk labs if you're if you want to kind of get an idea of this. The way that I think it'll be promoted to people is it's going to be super convenient, right? They're going to give you perks. They're going to make it look really nice and really fun. And that's how they always sell tools of control like that to you. The cell phone is an example of this. Oh, you'll have you know access to information at your fingertips and the ability to call and text people and be in constant communication with people. And that can be very alluring and addictive but the downside to that is that every single thing you do on that device is monitored by the federal government and other commercial and private entities as well they use that for targeted advertisement they use it to they can turn your your phone into a surreptitious recording device they can turn on the camera they can turn on the microphone and you you are literally carrying around a tracking device and a monitoring device but it's sold to you as something convenient and i think that's exactly what they're going to do with this stuff our own homes our own cars and our own communities into digital concentration camps so we must say no. We must say no to the mandates, but we must say no to the transaction control grid because that transaction control grid can be used to implement thousands and thousands of meta mandates when it goes into place. Yes. You put the passports or the IDs and the CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, together, and they can, if, if they decide you can't transact more than five kilometers from your home, you can't transact more than five kilometers from your home. If you can't, um, if they don't want you driving your car, you can't drive your car. If they don't want you buying pizza, you can't buy pizza. Yes. The general manager of the Bank of International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland, the Central Bank of Central Bank, explained that with CBDC uh, uh, as a replacement or a digital currency, they can make the rules of how the currency is used and they can enforce the rules centrally. Let that sit in centrally. So um, one great activist said that the implementation of the passports is the end of human liberty in the West, and that is in fact true if we let this control grid go in. Exactly. Yeah, and so that this, um... This is a very good explanation of like what's happening. And just think about that in light of what we're seeing now with the, in my opinion, organized planned collapse of cryptocurrency through things like FTX um, and others, right? This that Now they use that for their rallying cry to say, hey, we need to regulate this stuff. We need to bring in central bank digital currencies. We've got to be able to control. This is too, you know, it, it's too unregulated. It's too much of a high risk environment. And this is how they always do it under the guise of we're helping. And remember, Sam Bankman Freed was lobbying politicians to come in and regulate the cryptocurrency market right before this whole thing happened. Um, he says, is your money yours? There's a link to an archived article from Edward Snowden saying most of your money exists not as something folded in your wallet, but as an entry in a bank's database faithfully requested and rendered beneath the glass of your phone. If someone else gets to decide if and how you can spend it, is it really yours? Remember the Canadian truckers protest. The GoFundMe cancellation of the truckers' money should make you all aware of how a cashless society will work. The government gets mad at you and they can wipe out your money. The end. They think, that, uh, uh, think they can't get mad and you're a good citizen. Welcome to the social credit system. Now, that's a very good reference here for... Um, 
for how to look at this. Think about China's Sesame Credit uh, and social credit system as well and how dystopian it really is. Always remember it like that. Digital money from A or the central bank opens the door to fun things like predefined use and expiration dates of your money. So, oh, here's your allotment for groceries. We'll give you $100 for the next week and then it'll expire. And that's all you get, by the way. Think about how scary something like that is. And if you think they wouldn't do that, I don't know what planet you're living on. Of course they can and they will. They need you to be dependent on them. Example, from your basic income, X percent are reserved for food, Y percent for mobility, etc. If you don't use it within two months, it expires. Quote, you'll own nothing and be happy. Another example, you've already used your quota of spendings on gas or other carbon consumption and or have driven your allocated distance for the month. So you can't spend more money on gas. And this is part, uh, this part of your basic income expires. See in Zurich, that's another thing they've been trying to push out, especially to younger people that maybe are uh, saddled with student loan debts and very bleak uh, job prospects. This idea of a universal basic income is something that was memed at them, you know, through people like Andrew Yang and stuff like that. This idea that you, oh, you don't have to work and we'll give you a little ration. You'll be a good little slave on our plantation is essentially what it's saying. So moving on. Uh, and if you or your neighbor have been really bad, a lockdown will be enforced by locking your EID so you'll only have access to essential stores and services. That will all require an ID scan to let you in or not. Um, and then he talks about uh, Canada leading the way here. This is about following the money. Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum must be proud of this puppet. We'll play As a clip of this here. Of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. Oh, yeah. So that's the other thing. There's not going to be something like due process involved in this stuff. Like you're not going to have rights, quote unquote. This is not, they all claim this is to protect our democracy. No, this is totalitarian and we all know it. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal right. government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers. So the government can collude with the banks to target and disrupt people that they don't like, people that maybe are a problem for them. Um, it, how is that not understood for what it is? I mean, guys, they're doing this anyways behind the scenes. Uh, they just want to make it legal for them to do this stuff now. To ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. This is about following the money. This is about stopping the financing of these illegal blockades. We are today serving notice. If your truck is being used in these illegal blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. Yeah, so we'll, we'll take your money. Uh, as of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. We can just go in and take your money. Central banks are realizing a CBDC will have to be intimately linked to identity to deal with illicit finance and bank disintermediation risk. So there is a link here to a Financial Times article. It is archived, so you can go in and read that. If you're not a subscriber to the Financial Times, since they do put things behind paywalls, why CBDCs will likely be ID-based. Of course they are. Um, 
there's a video here that is linked that fits into the thread well. Again, I'm going to include the links for everything in the video description to this thread so you can go through and read all of this for yourself. Uh, try to convince me it's not coming. Quote, Biden orders study to look into government-backed digital currency. Now, this was from uh, March of 2020. So think about that. This is around the same time Sam Bankman-Fried is quietly lobbying people to try to go in and regulate the cryptocurrency market. And it's interesting that Sam Bankman-Fried was the second biggest donor to Joe Biden. And Biden has made this digital currency thing a big part of his platform. Um, so there's a link here. Uh, President Joe Biden issued an executive order asking federal agencies to study digital currencies and produce reports on their possible use and regulation by the federal government. According to a report in The Wall Street Journal, the order titled, quote, ensuring responsible development of digital assets directs federal agencies to investigate, quote, the risks cryptocurrencies pose to the economy, national security and climate, while also noting their possible benefits, unquote. Now, isn't that interesting? I, I mean, it, it really makes you start thinking, doesn't it? And noticing things. The noticing intensifies. Almonds are activated. Zimmies are rustled. Um, <laughs> we're starting to see, hmm, wow. Yeah, isn't that funny? And, you know, we also learned, too, that the uh, Southern District of New York had been quietly investigating FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried right before this whole thing collapsed, which again, I believe is on purpose. All of this stuff, when we look back historically at economic crises and collapses, a lot of times it's organized to centralize power and control. And again, as transfers of wealth from the poor to the wealthy. It is why the income disparity in this country continues to get worse and worse. Moving on here. Italy's Draghi's government is pushing its fight against cash in favor of traceable digital money. Again, a link there to that article. Money at home and in your pocket. If they are too many, they will find you. Draghi signs the closed payments. Government continues its fight against cash, a real great vehicle for tax evasion and money laundering. CBDC is approaching faster than some might think. This is from the Bank of International Settlements, the BIS. Almost 7 out of 10 central banks surveyed consider it likely or possible that they could issue a retail CBDC in the short or medium term. Quote, thousands of customers have been unable to carry out any online banking today as multiple banks are affected by an issue starting with Santander's payment system. But CBDC will be safe and secure. Yeah, uh-huh. Clown world. Funny at first sight, but hashtag digital money card decline. Please lead all tweets that violate your bank's hate speech policies to process your payment. This is exactly what they will do. Oh, yeah. A German bank, Deutsche Bank, wants its customers to go cashless. No, really, there's a link to that article as well. Um, TA Swiss is launching a call for proposals for a study on CBDC and digital money. Facial recognition payment. That is so convenient. Yeah, guys, this is how it happens. This recognition payment in China. This is something that will scare a lot of Westerners. But this is a norm in China now. You don't need your card. You don't need to bring your phone. You just need to scan the item you want to buy and the machine will scan your face. Then the money is deducted from your Alipay or WeChat Pay. That is so convenient. No, this sir. Recognition payment. That is so Orwellian. Cross-border payment, a vision for the future. This was live streamed in October of 2020. The lovely difference between cash and a central bank digital currency. We'll play this clip real quick, now, guys. Let me bring that up for everybody. In order our analysis on CBDC, in particular for the use of general, to the general use, uh, we tend to establish the equivalence with cash. Uh, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who's using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control 
on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. <laughs> yeah, they'll have absolute and total control of anything you do. He literally just told you. Like, they're telling you guys. They're not even trying to hide it. He just flat out said that. And look at him, the personification of diabetes and greed. And also, we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important, and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, she, to what cash is. Now, in all our... Yeah, they tell on themselves, guys. They tell on themselves. Universal basic income, lovely vision. At Tasha Labs, crazy thing just happened. I'll be joining Tony Blair Institute's Tech Policy Fellowship to develop public policy recommendations for universal basic income using CBDC network. Definitely didn't see that coming when I posted this tweet below two months ago. Excited and blessed idea. CBDC ledger network. One staking a uh, wallet per citizen charge transaction fees on all activities and give them to staking wallets it just makes me sick guys it really does the war on cash is a war on freedom when all cash is gone how do you buy anything when your computer says no to your digital money exactly that's the idea hashtag ubi which was once unthinkable is being rolled out around the world what is going on that's from money week Universal basic income, the idea that everyone should be paid a, quote, livable income by the state, no strings attached, there's no such thing as a free lunch, guys, come on, was once for the birds. Now it seems to be on the brink of being rolled out, says Stuart Watkins. That's April of 2022. ECB selects external companies for joint prototyping of user interfaces for a digital euro. Quote, like cash, but digital. Well, you know the difference, don't you? If not, see the linked tweet. Yeah. A digital euro. The digital euro would be like euro banknotes, but digital. It would be an electronic form of money issued by the euro system, the ECB, and the national central banks of the euro area and would be accessible to all citizens and firms. A digital euro would not replace cash, but rather complement it. Oh, please. A digital euro would give people an additional choice about how to pay and make it easier to do so, contributing to accessibility and inclusion. I think we all know that that is a lie. The Atlantic Council, a think tank in the Beltway, has a CBDC tracker where you can see how your country is progressing on that matter. And that actually, it's convenient to look at because it really goes to show you how terrifying this is that it is literally becoming a reality right now and we're just like sleepwalking into this dystopian future and no one really seems to be doing anything about it quote central central bank digital currencies are the bullet train to digital concentration camps pretty much the whole thread above is summarized in this article yes exactly um of course they are you spoke up against um you know, putting something on your child's face at a school board meeting, purchase denied. You exceeded your vehicle's weekly mile uh, miles and surpassed your carbon limit, purchase denied. You posted a private message on Facebook questioning the integrity of something, purchase denied. You did not take your latest gene therapy, purchase denied. <laughs> you defied a protocol and traveled outside of a certain zone, purchase denied. Exactly. A U.S. central bank digital currency would not be anonymous, says Federal Reserve Chair uh, Powell. Yeah, Jerome Powell, this guy's a real piece of work. Here we go. We think that there are four characteristics of if we were to pursue a CBDC, it would at a minimum have the following four characters. And guys, this was in September of 2022. This was just a couple months ago. This is right before the collapse of FTX and then the New York Federal Reserve doing the uh, pilot program here for a CBDC. Characteristics. First is intermediated. Second is private, privacy protected. Yeah, Third right. Third is identity verified. So it would not be anonymous. It would not be an anonymous bearer instrument. And fourth is transferable or interoperable. So so we're, we would be looking to balance privacy protection 
with identity verification, which is which has to be done, of course, in today's traditional banking system as well. Mm hmm. Doesn't it now? The red digital currency yuan comes with an uh, expiry date. Spend it or it will vanish. China's digital currency is programmable to have an expiration date, which gives its central bank um, to effectively and uh, to effectively and boost consumption demand or impose negative rates as required. Oh, look at that. China is exploring expiration dates with its upcoming digital yuan or DCEP, which means the currency will expire if you don't use it in a certain time frame. The digital yuan is programmable to the point that the currency can be made to expire, thus forcing consumers to use it up by a certain date. This is a twist on an obscure, unconventional monetary policy innovation known as the Giselle currency, expiring money, which gives the issuing government a heightened degree of control over money velocity. MSN has removed the article linked in the first tweet of this thread, but here's the archive version and screenshots of the original article. This was from June 21st, 2021. Quote, Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. Patrick M. Wood at Stop Technocracy on CBDC. The new economic system that's envisioned has to have a new financial system and it has to be digitized. That's why the central banks of the world today are all coordinating to create a system, a network of digital currency. Digital yes, they are 100 percent. Digitalization of money requires a digital ID for all the people that would use that financial system. Digital identity means that you can be identified in such a way to attach all of your history, your activity, and your future to one single point. Yes, it's centralized control of everything that you do, everything tracked represents you. Digital identity means total loss of privacy, total revealing of every conceivable activity that you... Yes, yeah, so you're tracked everywhere. Um, that's the whole point. Uh, moving on, Bo Lee, Deputy Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund about the programmability of CBDCs. You'll buy what you're allowed to buy and you'll be happy. The third way we think CBDC can improve financial inclusion is through what we call programmability. That is, CBDC can allow government agencies and private sector players to program, to create smart contracts, to allow targeted policy functions. For example, welfare payment. For example, consumption coupon. For example, food stamp. By programming CBDC, those money can be precisely targeted for what kind of people can own and what kind of use this money can be utilized, for example, for food. So this potential programmability can help government agencies to precisely target their support to those people who need support. So that way can also improve financial inclusion. Of course, yeah, I want right. to end with a caveat, because CBDC is not a panacea. CBDC cannot solve every challenge in financial inclusion. There are some That's the lie that it has anything to do with financial inclusion. It most certainly does not. Aspects of financial inclusion is not related to technology, for example, financial literacy, digital literacy. So CBCC has to work with other policies together to try to improve financial inclusion. I stop here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Isn't that nice? CBDC will be attractive for central players to join this ecosystem. People's privacy? Well, why would they care about that? They don't. Well, just a quick question. When you look out at, at what's happening so far in this sphere, mm -hmm. uh, do you see any ways in which, you know, the transaction data so helpful are being used now or, or could be used or should be put into a plan? Just any specific example. 
Well, I can give you one example in China because I personally experienced it, right? Those transaction data can be utilized by service providers in credit underwriting in the sense that, you know, those transaction data in terms of how many coffee I drink every day, where I buy coffee, do I use uh, Uber every day, and what kind of working hours I have, those non-traditional data can be very useful for financial service providers okay. to give me a credit score. And based on that credit score, the financial service provider give me a credit line yeah, without any face-to-face -face due diligence. Yeah, would you look at that? Oh, as long as you're a good boy, you're a good little slave, and you have a good social credit score, then you'll be fine. That's how this whole thing will work. Guys, don't you know? That's a big saving because traditionally, you know, banks, they need to do due diligence. They need to meet with us face to face. Mm -hmm. They need to even visit my home if they want to give me a home equity loan, right? Uh -huh. So there's a lot of cost associated with traditional credit underwriting. But the non-traditional credit underwriting is based on data. And there is no need for face-to-face -face meeting. And okay. it's much faster and much cheaper. And that's a way to create value. And we see a <laughs> lot of that already in China because we have very- Yeah, let's just turn the, you know, the whole world into China. Let's do that. That's a great idea, guys. Very good mobile payment system in China. And those service providers, they are providing a lot of additional financial service in addition to payment. Right. And that can be very profitable. And that's the value we are talking about to make it yeah. attractive to private sector players to join this ecosystem. Well, unbelievable. And guys, this just continues. Rishi Sunak plans to introduce uh, official digital currency to rival cash. And look who, and then this was right before he became the UK's next PM. He certainly is now. So there you go. Um, to mark the launch of the G7's new report on CBDCs, the Chancellor explains what they are and how they could benefit businesses and customers. If you think they're benefiting anybody but the very, very wealthy elite, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Today, I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Oh, how nice. Very sweet. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. Oh, as if they're going to be used alongside of anything, as if physical notes and coins are going to be there after they introduce this. But guys, he's so excited to tell you about it. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. And governments and central banks across the world are working together, looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. This is, guys, this is a global government, okay? It's global governance. They're all working together, hand in hand, to subjugate the masses. This includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient and available to everyone. <laughs> oh, is that what people are concerned about? That's what matters to people? Hmm, okay. A potential CBDC could offer businesses and consumers new ways to pay in the future. Wow. It's all part of the wider story of digital innovation that has delivered benefits to millions around the world and in the UK. Do they, they must really think that we are dumb. They must really think that they're that the people that they're supposed to serve are this stupid, that they can just talk to you as if you are nothing more than cattle. The decision on whether to launch a central bank digital currency is for each country to make, and no G7 jurisdiction has yet made that choice. These decisions raise important questions about the reshaping of our economy, financial systems, and the way in which people interact with money and payments. 
That's why working together and careful evaluation with our international partners is essential. Oh yes, we must all come together. We must work together with our international partners to figure out the best way to turn you all into, um, you know, debt slaves. In the UK earlier this、Holy、year,、cow. I announced a new joint task force between the Treasury and the Bank of England to look into a potential CBDC. I bet you did. As a compliment to cash、oh, and bank deposits. Oh, it's a compliment. We're also. It's just a compliment. Hearing from firms, technology experts, and others. Under the leadership of the UK, this report today will help support and inform exploration of CBDCs in the G7 and beyond. With these principles, the G7 is leading an important step change in the global policy conversation. Okay, I can't listen to that anymore. It's just ludicrous. Quote: Central Bank of Turkey plans to launch a CBDC in 2023. That seems to be the year that they've all set. For rolling this stuff out,、uh, here's the fun part: "quote The digital Turkish lira system will be integrated with digital identity." Move up in this thread to understand what that means. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Australia: "quote The bank is now tracking your carbon footprint based on how you spend your money, but you can pay to offset it. So give us money, or you're you know you get a certain amount of."、Um, A carbon allowance, and then if you go over that, you have to give us money to get more, so you can offset it.、Uh, next step transaction denied. Your quota of gas or meat for this month has been reached. Exactly. Look at this. I mean, this is not a joke. Transport, groceries, eating out, category breakdowns. These are contributing to your carbon footprint. Unreal. Joe Rogan and Tulsi Gabbard on CBDCs and social credit score. Yeah, I'm I'm concerned about all that, and I'm I'm concerned about the lack of understanding that people have about the implementation of implementation of things like a digital currency that is centralized, that's controlled by the government. Right. That scares the shit out of me. Absolutely. Because that's what we're and Maxine Waters. Yes. It should scare everybody, and yet people are just sleepwalking into this. No one's really doing anything about it. No one's even talking about it that much. Who has been promoting this? Said that we need this to compete with China, which is so crazy. Yeah, it's like saying we need communism. You know what's funny? Paul Ryan just said that also. So you think that there's a difference between like a, a leftist and a so-called conservative or a Republican and a Democrat? There's not. They they get the same talking points. They just have different ways of presenting it to their respective constituencies, but they have the same masters. Okay. To compete with communism,、yeah, exactly, because that's what it yeah. is. Yeah, if you want to compete with communists, you have to be a communist. Like what? Yeah, like digital currency that's centralized by the state is terrifying because they'll connect it to a social credit score system. Yeah, if they connect it to a social credit score system, Tulsi Gabbard, I don't like what you said on the Joe Rogan experience.、Mm-hmm. We're going to go and eliminate your ability to fly. Right, you can't. Well, Tulsi Gabbard is one of the World Economic Forum young leaders. You know, so let's be real about this. Fly. You can't travel. You、right. can't buy gas anymore. Yep. You, can, which is what they do、all、in China. That, with it's all within the realm of possibility. And you look at that, and you and、uh, what is the recent thing of? I think Elizabeth Warren was pushing for credit card companies to start tracking people who buy ammunition, yes, and firearms, and well, report、Visa、that to the government. Visa. They're already doing that stuff, guys. This has been going on in the background for a very long time. Christine Lagarde, president. Of the ECB on central bank digital currencies. Look at this demon. If we are not in that game, if we are not involved in experimenting, in innovating in terms of digital、uh, central bank money, we risk losing the role of anchor that we have played、uh, for many, many decades. If、hmm. we are not in that game. Well, there you have it. The Dutch Queen. Uh, has strictly no clue what she's talking about, but she learned her lesson well. Let's play it. Deposits in commercial banks. That could make it av- unavailable for lending, for mortgages, or working capital for small entrepreneurs. A good design of CBDCs could actually give people more control 
or their transactional data <laughs> and the ability to share yeah, right. it with a wider set of financial sector providers. Yet, growing concerns about data privacy would need to be addressed by hardwiring personal data protections into the structure of a CBDC. Yeah, because that's going to happen. It is clear that more dialogue, research and trials are needed to show how and when CBDCs can best become engines of financial inclusion. <laughs> and more work is needed to understand the unique value addition vis-a-vis -vis existing paper. Value addition. Guys, this is nonsense talk. It's absolute nonsense. Payment system such as mobile money or real-time high-value digital payments. So how to proceed further? The Bank for International Settlements, the IMF, and the World Bank can help governments and certain banks to exchange knowledge and undertake research alongside academics such as those as the MIT Media Lab. Global platforms like the G20 and G7 can provide venues to develop common understanding and principles and possibly even standards. Tech sprints, like the one run by the Indonesian G20 with the BIS Innovation Hub, give us a chance to see innovation, innovative private sector, use cases and solutions. Okay, moving on. This is all nonsense. Quote, banking giants and New York Fed start 12-week digital dollar pilot program. Oh, how convenient. That was from just a couple days ago. Uh, New York global banking giants are starting a 12-week digital dollar pilot with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York participants announced on Tuesday. Citigroup, HSBC Holdings, MasterCard, and Wells Fargo are among the financial companies participating in the experiment. Experiment! Alongside the New York's Fed's Innovation Center, they said in a statement the project, which is called the Regulated Liability Network, will be conducted in a test environment and use simulated data, the New York Fed said. Quote, Bank of Canada staff working paper 2021 through 67, best before expiring central bank digital currency and loss recovery. Um, there's links here to the PDF for this uh, in the thread here. Hashtag digital currency because it's oh so convenient. Read the previous tweets in this thread and you'll definitely be convinced. Hey, cool, government is trying to make my life easier with a digital currency. Social credit scores, vulnerability to state and foreign actors. Banks have full control of every penny you own. Zero privacy, zero uh, or cybersecurity attacks, zero anonymity. All your movements and actions are traceable. Centralization, frozen funds, access to your money can be turned off at any moment moment every transaction is documented but our npc sees convenience oh it's convenient state of control we will come to live uh will we come to live in a state of control or can we use this technocratic movement to our advantage no you cannot use it to your advantage sorry i think everyone can see at this point the unfolding quest for digital id they don't tend to think about issues such as these free social tech giants, data harvesting, data farming us. New concerns tonight about the social media giants' role in fake news and elections. But we've seen this immense explosion of the digital and the data economy. Yeah. The more data we have, the smarter our algorithms. <laughs> Een digitale euro is een zegen voor de samenleving of een vloek voor de samenleving. Well, we have begun to see people dislocated from their accounts because of protest activity. Yes. But governments realize they have new tools that they've never had before. Is it a juiste keuze als het mogelijk wordt dat een centrale bank alle informatie krijgt over jouw en mijn transacties? The central bankers can dictate the rules of when and how you can use your money. If you have seen what has happened in the world in the past couple of years and you're not concerned by that level of control, then I don't think there's anything I could say to possibly bring that home to you. Exactly. Yeah. 
Okay, so anyways, that's that for here. I just want to show also a couple other things. Um, there, there was a debate about CBDCs at the Dutch Parliament. Peaceful Dutch citizens have gathered in front of the Parliament to protest against these plans. Police came in to sweep the place clean. Protect yourself against these horrible plans. Um, yeah, well, there's not much you can do to protect yourself, though, unfortunately. And that was just around two days ago that that was happening. Uh, the Dutch Queen is a key person on CBDC and a member of the steering committee at the World Economic Forum. Of course, exactly. Uh, this was the um, headline here. Uh, you can't see it good in my little window here, but the New York Fed launched a 12-week CBDC pilot program with major banks. Paul Ryan, this is Paul Ryan echoing um, Maxine Waters, the U.S. must catch up to China's digital currency in order to lead the world, which, guys, it's... It's nonsensical. This is just how stupid they think that you are. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on the central bank digital currency, the World Economic Forum, the Great Reset, the Green New Deal, this idea that you will own nothing and be happy, all while they sell this to you as they're doing this for a financial literacy and uh, economic inclusion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving and have a good weekend. Whee!